my talk today, as you may have seen, is saying no to negative alien hybriding and adultery, a command to take back women's reproductive womb power on earth. So I will be kind of taking that apart and helping us understand what it is. Um, I just want to invite everybody to shift gears a little bit. And, and if you will, just close your eyes for a moment. Take a couple of deep breaths. Feel yourself in your bodies against Mother Earth. Feel your feet, your fingertips, and your toes. Just breathing and coming really into this now moment. Releasing the past, releasing the future, being in the eternally unfolding now. And as we're doing this, just see that you're setting protection of golden light with love all around yourself, all around our group that's watching live and in replay. And we are calling on the authentic Holy Sophia Christos beings of true love, light, and wisdom to be with us, around us, including Yeshua, King Arthur, the authentic Archangel Michael, the protector being Betala, and the Mary Mariam Mary priestesses, Mother Mary, Magdalene and Mother Mary's sister, Mary Padagita. We're asking them to surround and protect us as we speak and listen and on into the future. So taking a deep breath in and out. And I invite you now to open your eyes. So I know this is kind of an intense talk and I just wanted to mention that at the end, I'm gonna leave you with a tool for working with it, managing it, um, feeling, it protected, and also a gift to process what I'm going to be sharing, as well as a couple of offerings to anchor yourself in your wise love, which I see as the answer to everything I'm talking about today, uh, so that you're not just going to be left spinning with the information I'm presenting. And so the genesis of this talk, when I got this invitation, I just came out with this outlandish title. It's sort of the amalgamation of all of these bits and pieces in this arena that I've been talking about for years, all in one compact talk. And um, the reason why I feel this is important is that I'm noticing that the womb is missing from too many discussions and channelings related to the topic of interdimensional beings engaging in the hybriding of the human form going back deep in history. And this is assuming some background understanding on your part. And if you're new to this, you can start investigating this topic and just take in what you can of what I'm talking about here today. So the womb is missing from that big ancient, you know, telescopic history, as well as the more recent disclosure discourse about abductions and experimentation by whatever you want to call them, extraterrestrials, ultra-terrestrials, et cetera, on humans. And so what I'm seeing is that a lot of, that through these discussions and these channelings, we're being introduced to beings who are kind of genetic scientists, and they're generally male and depicted as kind of lab technician gods of reality. So I've learned that the human womb and the cosmic womb, you know, mother divine's holy universal womb, are the most sought after places that negative interdimensionals infiltrate in order to carry out their hybriding agendas. This is not just stuff that happens in, you know, matrix labs and so forth. All right. It's, it's, it involves ideally the use of the human and the cosmic and the divine goddess wombs to carry out what Oracle Lisa Renee and others are calling forced breeding programs. And so in the case, let's say of Zeus, many of us are familiar with this ancient so-called God. I have learned that he is basically an Anunnaki reptilian hybrid and his story of be swallowing the pregnant Metis and, you know, birthing Athena out of his head shows that all male beings either must attempt to fashion artificial womb receptacles or rape wombs in order to give birth to their seed. And this takes place on both human woman level and 
goddess level, cosmic goddess. There always needs to be some kind of chamber or pod. And these beings know that because they contain and are all about organic life and DNA, the authentic cosmic womb and her multiple fractalized aspects in human women are the best places for these beings to carry out their breeding agendas and genetic manipulation. So let's just take a breath. Talk about a history that has been veiled. In more recent times, this coveting of the human womb in interdimensional experimentations is demonstrated in testimonies of people, maybe some of you watching this, who have been abducted and report having their reproductive material siphoned off and used. Some women report memories of having to care for the beings they've apparently had their wombs used to create. So as I see it, this missing history, this missing information about the importance of the womb in all of this is also part of the hijacking of humanity. So not only are the experimentations and abductions going on, but the veiling of the fact that the human and cosmic wombs are being used um, is part of this whole agenda. It's important that to these beings that we not see it and understand it. So today is another way of lifting the lid off of this because the human and goddess wombs are ground zero for infiltration, manipulation, and the carrying out of hybriding, cloning, and transhuman AI agendas. Let's just take a breath here. This infiltration is something we do need to uncover, and we need to not just describe what's happening around it, but to empower ourselves around this so as to turn the Earthship around in a direction that truly benefits humanity. Women are at the helm of that ship by virtue of the fact that they contain wombs, and our wombs are the gatekeepers of this planet. So how have these understandings developed for me? When I was a child, my father, may he rest in peace, worked for a company called Perkin Elmer. From 1969, he was there through the mid-70s. When the company was creating the optical chassis for the KH9 hexagon, code word, Big Bird spy satellites, which David Wilcox said in one of his articles in September 2018, quote, these covert satellites were apparently the communications backbone of the deep state. That is, they were the foundation of planetary surveillance carried out by the cabal and negative interdimensional forces. We did not know what my father was doing. He was an electrical engineer. He couldn't tell us. He had a security clearance. This was a top secret project. We don't really know exactly what else was going on with us and our lives as a result of and in conjunction with this, but I will offer you some other thoughts on that as we go along. For now, let's just fast forward to my 20s when I heard talks by the Harvard psychiatrist John Mack, who at the time was hypnotically regressing people who were reporting astounding experiences of being abducted and frequently having their reproductive material used by what seemed to be gray alien types of beings. When I moved to California in the late 1990s, I met John Mack when he visited his organization there known as PEER, an acronym for something about uh, extraordinary research. And then I was shocked by his sudden death in the UK, apparently by a vehicle who hit him when he as an American was looking the wrong way on the street or so the story is told. That definitely seemed very suspicious to me. I can well imagine how much John Mack was a fly in Harvard University's ointment and a problem for interdimensionals who wanted to keep their doings under the cloak of dark night. When I was in my 30s and in graduate school at the California Institute of Integral Studies, through a, a flash of insight one fine day in 2001, I had my awakening to the reality of an alternative birthing practice of human women, an alternative conception practice, divine conception, as an authentic priestess technology to bring in divine avatars in a conscious 
way. So I wrote about this in my dissertation and first two books, primarily as it regarded priestesses of ancient Greece doing this practice, but I was noting that it is something that has been worldwide practiced by high-level holy women. My books were published in 2009 and 10, The Cult of Divine Birth in Ancient Greece, and then the second one, Virgin Mother Goddesses of Antiquity, explicate all of this as, do, as does this, um, the mystery tradition of miraculous conception, which Alan mentioned earlier. Well, crickets on those books from the academic world, but a good deal of interest from those who were spiritually awakening. With some affirmation uh, about this process going on with some human women I met or came to know about. For example, um, one of the holy women named Divine Amma of India, this is not Amma Chi, but another Divine Amma, was public about her divine conception of her child. A woman pseudonymously named Lori, who was written about in Den Poitras' book, Parthenogenesis, and a few other colleagues along the way. And I began teaching about the history of divine birth in programs and workshops in graduate schools and throughout the esoteric school I founded in 2012, Seven Sisters Mystery School, and this material was met with great interest. So through that research, I discovered on the internet examples of artificial wombs that were being created in, in labs and evidence for cloning projects going on through, for example, a company known as CloneAid. Just today, as of this talk, I looked online and saw an article in Nature's Journal dated September 2023, human trials of artificial wombs could start soon. Since my research in the early 2000s, I've discovered that research groups have been working on artificial wombs for years. Take a look and see the matrix in action. You may wanna put your dragon to guard your ultimate chakra at the base of your skull. Let's all take a breath. Now, this may be difficult to hear and take it or leave it as it is difficult for me to speak about this. I know there are implications for many in our human family. This may not be popular information and I do this with care and love, but I do feel the need to speak what I've been shown. Around 2013, I began channeling in medicine ceremonies that autistic Asperger's spectrum children were the result of gray alien hybriding experiments that have been allowed to go on since the 1960s, at least. In my orbit at the time, I was aware of one child who was quite autistic, and I was shown in that medicine ceremony that he had so many implants in him that should they be removed, he would die. I doubted my oracle information, and I hesitatingly shared this with a friend of the parents of this child, and what did I come to learn? The father had had numerous episodes in his life of waking up unable to move, which is a clear sign of alien abduction. And the mother at night was sometimes spending hours battling interdimensionals through her pregnancies and while the children were little. I then would happen to be in places where out of control autistic children were acting out and from this, I received the insight that the level of their disturbance was a factor of the level of gray alien DNA within them. And I was given to understand that this project on the part of the grays was owing to them wanting to re themselves after having lost their souls through re repeated use of reproductive cloning technologies. And they knew the answer of their ensoulment and thus immortality was in the organic DNA of humans. They wanted the bare minimum amount of human DNA to do this, so they were experimenting with percentages in their experiments. The more uncomfortable the children in their bodies, the more dysfunctional as humans they were, the more great DNA they had. Those with Asperger's have lower levels of gray within them. This is what often renders them scientifically gifted and able to fit into corporate life well, which is a bastion of negative interdimensional programming agendas. Thus, it seems that some of the children were being hybrided to populate the STEM domain, science, technology, engineering, and math, 
and be cogs to fuel biotech, AI, and other agendas harmful to humanity. Let's take a breath. I came to understand that while most of the breeding pods and hybrided children were held off planet in the 60s through the 90s, after 2000 or so, the experiments had been injected into the human family on Earth. And this is why we see the rise in Asperger's and autism, which many of us over 50 never remember seeing or hearing of in previous decades. In 2017, I took a workshop with Carl Mollison, the channeler, about the extent of negative beings working on our planet and possessing and manipulating humans. And that very same month, I took a course in the Holy Womb Chakra teachings that had been brought to light by the late Hindu saint, Sri Kaleshwar. These teachings taken from the ancient palm leaf manuscripts of India and elsewhere show the tremendous power of the wombs of human women and mother divine writ large and the need to clear the womb space of unwanted energy so that we can return our powers to ourselves as women and as a human family. And following these incredible downpours of information in, in early 2018, I began having reptilian realizations, per, perhaps memories, about the clash of the sexes among these beings, that their sexual intercourse could degenerate into the phallic sword and the vagina dentata if one or more of these beings was angry with the other at the time of the intercourse, and that the queens of the reptilian domains were the winners in this, and the males went marauding around the universe, coming to planet Earth to steal sexual energy, as well as interweave themselves further genetically into the human family through conception rites of the elites. And awakening within me was a general sense of rage about womb tampering. Now, a few years ago, I told my psychic mentor about my father having worked in Perkin Elmer. And what did she tell me in that monumental session, a woman I had been working with for at least six or seven years? She said, my father worked for Perkin Elmer too. It turns out in a very synchronistic encounter that both of our fathers worked at that company overlapping by a year. And both of us were aware of the famous trip to Disneyland in 1969 when we were seven years old, which it turns out was actually a business trip that our fathers made taking their wives and some family members in tow. It seems to me that given that the place where these satellites were launched was Vandenberg, now called Space Force Base, then Air Force Base, three hours from Disneyland, whatever the case may be, these men must have been going to that Air Force Base as part of the business trip. My father did confirm with me before his death that it was a business trip. My mentor and her brother went on that trip, but I did not. My brother did not. And I attribute that trip to the beginning of a recurring nightmare I had in which I was killed for defying a very powerful and threatening man. Well, I began investigating what Perkin Elmer had been doing. And it turns out they declassified that hexagon Big Bird spy satellite project um, in recent years. But I realized that my mother who'd had lupus since she was a teen, died within weeks after she and my father took a vacation to Montauk, Long Island. Now, Carl Mollison, the channeler, gave me a reading and he said, you know, the synchronicity of you and your psychic mentor, both having fathers who work for this company, is the writing of creator in the sky. And he read for me that I had been abducted as a child and that my eggs were used in off-planet breeding pods and that I was taken to go up and see these beings and be asked to give them some nurturing. I do not have a memory of this. All I have is an overwhelming rage at the thought of womb hijacking by interdimensionals. Is that rage my smoking gun? Carl said that my father was too inquisitive and remained on the conventional level of this hexagon spy satellite, rather than the secret space program level at Perkin Elmer. My mentor has other stories of what her father told her, however, 
Carl says that the trip to Montauk was coincidental and had nothing to do with my mother's death, despite the fact that there is a well-known programming torture center in Montauk. But my mentor's mother also died before her father did, and we wonder what toll it took on these women to be married to men who were taking home top secrets they could not share. Over the last few years, I've been studying the work of Lisa Renee and Indigo Angel, among others, and I have learned from them about the extent of forced breeding programs in every dimension, reality, and timeline, making the gray alien abduction of humans look like a kid's coloring book version of what has been going on. A few years ago, I learned that the daughter of a friend was pregnant for three months and then suddenly was not pregnant. Pregnant. Apparently, this does happen to women. I asked the mother if she believed in aliens and she began telling me of at least several encounters she and her family had of seeing ships. So, it seems that the shenanigans are now involving impregnating the women and then simply stealing the fetuses. And this is so outside of what most people can comprehend that despite ultrasounds attesting to the presence of the fetus and its disappearance, they and the medical establishment somehow explain this away in their minds. This year in 2023, as I was preparing for teaching my Seven Mysteries of Magdalene course, I dove again into the apocryphal gospel material sometimes known as Gnostic, and I found Jesus talking about adultery. When I bore into what the term means, I found Jesus' exact quote in the Gospel of Philip, quote, every act of sexual intercourse between those unlike each other is adultery. Just prior to that quote, he says that Cain, Cain and Abel, Cain was birthed through adultery on the part of the murderous serpent archon or ruler. And other Gnostic sources say that this serpent seduced Eve, this archonic reptilian serpent seduced Eve, and this produced Cain, who then brought in murder into the early human family, murdering his brother Abel. So this means that adultery is the consorting of non-human entities with human women for forced breeding of their harmful seed on the planet. We have come to refer to adultery as sexual relating among those not married on the human realm under the morality guise that married people are, should, are, should not mix, right? Two things that should not mix. But this is but a metaphorical reference to the original meaning of two different interdimensional species or an interdimensional species relating with humans, beings who are raping, seducing, and impregnating humans. So what I now understand is that Jesus was referring to the interdimensional sexual and crossbreeding travesties happening long ago. In the Testament of Reuben, we have the watchers who turn themselves into human males and sexually cavort with human women, which resulted in the problematic birthing of the giant beings known as the Nephilim. So these giant watchers committed adultery with human women, and the Nephilim were born. And this story also appears much earlier in Genesis 6, 1 through 4, where the interdimensional beings who impregnate human women are referred to as sons of God. And the Nephilim are mentioned in that same breath with the implication that they are the children of such unions. And this kind of consorting, adultery, was the origin of the concept of sin, and it was understood to violate cosmic law for good reason that we are all living with the consequences of now. According to the testimony of many seers, as you may know, it seems the entire human race is a function of interdimensional breeding experiments, some of which were ethical and some of which were not. And I'm not sure we yet have the guidebook to determine which was which, but it seems that we contain both angelic and Archonic, that is the negative reptilian and Anunnaki, among other DNA, talk about true world history. A related plague that goes along with this interdimensional reproductive tampering is the sexual abuse 
infiltration into the human family, which has been going on for quite some time. Thousands, if not more years. The sexual abuse happens at the pedestrian levels of, you know, secret activities in the homes. It also takes place at the elite negative ultra terrestrial levels in rituals that co-opt the divine birth practices we're talking on royal levels and so forth. All of these types of encounters are an offshoot of adultery, the mixing of human and non-human, and are part of the negative alien agenda. Because the sexual energies, the pain and the shame generated through and in and after and before these processes serve as food for certain negative interdimensionals. And we need to understand how this is part and parcel of the sexual siphoning of humanity and say no. So sexual abuse is not about our fathers, our brothers, our uncles, our family friends, or even our female relatives who become tagged with this behavior. This is about spirit possession of our loved ones, as well as technologies, such as the use of timeline manipulation to create abuse lines that don't even exist in a person's organic timeline, but are then rolled out through memory tags. And I've talked more, I've talked about this with Denny Hunt in videos. The Oracle Elizabeth April has also said that interdimensional abductions of humans um, can even take away orgasmic functioning, especially in women. To attempt to protect yourself from the perpetration, your cervix seizes up and it never quite feels safe enough again to relax for the natural orgasmic capacity that goes along with the human form. Let's all, again, just take a breath here. Last year in 2022, it became clear to me that this problem of tampering with human reproduction goes back to the splitting of the sexes. And that goes back to a time recorded by Plato, who in the symposium reports that humans used to be one hermaphroditic being, where there were three types. One was female, female, one was male, male, one was male, female. And then Zeus, the great Anunnaki reptilian being, split them. The, the original human unity is affirmed by the seer Rudolf Steiner, who says the human was in this form in ancient Lemuria. And he says, in terms of the reproduction of this being, before the appearance of these differentiated forms, every human being could of itself bring forth another. So we're wanting to go back in history to an even deeper time when procreation on the part of humans was willed and did not even require sexual relating. And this is where the priestesses of divine birth took their memories from. Divine conception is a process that it's in its best and purest form requires the woman stimulating androgyny within herself. This is what my research reveals. She becomes hermaphroditic and then she reaches to the stars to co-create with Mother Divine, a divine spirit in her body, an avatar that can birth through her and walk the planet to help humanity. There are women on the planet who have been involved in this, and there is much more for sacred women to explore with integrity in this regard. As for the split sexes, there are also conscious ways that couples can work tantrically to be in the highest vibration possible to conceive what amounts to a divine child. And the Holy Womb Chakra teachings revealed by Sri Kaleshwar in the early 2000s, and which I offer a course on, contain a process whereby couples can do that. This is very much part of the recognition that the entire universe is a uterus of Mother Divine, something that I discerned even for years before I learned of Kaleshwar's teachings. So this information is in the morph, and I encourage more of us to be in our receptive open states to inquire on these topics. We want to return to divine conception practices, be it parthenogenetic or through tantric high ritual, 
as a regular order of practice on earth, not a specialty subset. Again, women's wombs are the gatekeepers to who comes into our planet and how they come. We want to bring elevated souls to earth for the betterment of this world. Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene are here for us as teachers of wise womb empowerment. Sri Kaleshwar tells us that both of them knew of the palm leaf manuscripts, in, in fact, authored some of them, worked with those mantras and those sacred diagrams known as the yantras as part of their work as did Jesus. These Marys are Sophia wisdom dragon priestesses and their true work is gradually being revealed. And again, my next book, The Secret Life of Mother Mary lifts the veil on Mary's work as a priestess of love and womb empowerment. So um, be on the lookout for that in July, 2024. And so I spent some time in meditation with them today and I received this. And you can either keep your eyes open or closed as you listen. And here's what I received basically from the Holy Family. We know of the Archonic worlds. We came to address these issues and help the human family awaken and empower itself through the initiation into love. Go deeper, broader, wider. Penetrate the veils. Engage wise love to claim your sovereignty. You need not be victims to hidden crimes against humanity and cosmic law. This is your great awakening. So for all of us gathered here today, I declare the following. I declare earth and human women's wombs and the wombs of all earth creatures sovereign. I command that anything that does not serve our highest good leave this planet now. I declare the holy womb of universal mother, high holy Sophia, and all of her emanations as sovereign. I command that all negative tampering cease, that her holy womb be restored to its rightful place and role of supreme creator of the universe. I call upon the great beings of the holy family to continue to assist us with this awakening, clearing, and healing for the greatest good of humanity in the entire fractal of creation herself. I declare and command this or better according to the greatest good of all. And so it is, blessed be. So I'm going to give you one process that you can, it's a simple process that you can work with for yourself uh, at the conclusion of this talk very shortly. For now, I am going to offer to everyone some links in chat that I'm going to be talking about. Um, this coming year, I'm going to be in Seven Sisters Mystery School offering the, it's all going to be focused on the stellar year of healing and love with the Holy Family. And the first course is going to be sexual healing with Magdalene and Jesus starting mid-February. So please sign up for our newsletter to be kept abreast of that as the newsletter um, will let you know. And that course is going to address some of this that I've been talking about today in a healing way. So there's a link for that in chat. For those of you who are interested in the Holy Womb Chakra teachings that I've been referring to here to empower your wombs, and this is open to people of, of you know men and women, okay? Because Kaleshwar told us that um, men have the fragrance of the Holy Womb within them as well. And they also can, of course, access the Holy Womb through their mothers and through women. Mm. And so um, you can... Mm. You can find that in the link 
-hmm. And I'm also offering you a free gift, a free gift just for signing up for it. This is the Reclaiming Our Story Origins course which offers you a stunning slide presentations on the universe's uterus, on reconnecting with the seven sisters of the Pleiades as seven starseed mothers of humanity, a related topic to what I'm talking about here today, uh, the sacred bee as a portal to astral consciousness and prophecy and more. This is perfect for you if you have an inkling that it all began with a big birth and not a big bang. And so see that link and use the coupon code portal 100 between now and Saturday night, midnight, and that will zero out your cost and deliver the course directly to you. Mm, and great. Oh. so I've got a couple of more things to say, Alan. Okay, I yes. I just want to say, I'm so happy you're using Kalashwar's work because I studied yeah. with Kalashwar too, so. Oh, yes, as a matter of fact, I saw your amazing interview with him online yeah. from years ago. That was really wonderful. What well, a great master. Go there ahead. are going to be time for some questions here because I'm I'm done early. But um, I, I also want to say before I give you this final tool, um, the best answer to all of this is really to further awaken your consciousness and deepen into wise love. And all of our understandings of what to do about these abductions, these hybridings, any of this is going to come through wise love. And toward that end, I highly recommend my cacao ceremonies, and we have one coming up this Thursday, December 21st for solstice. The link is in chat, I believe. That is where this sacred plant spirit of cacao teaches us how to open our hearts and our minds in conjunction with one another and receive the kind of information for dealing with the good, the bad, and the ugly in the most elevated way. So these ceremonies are, are a way that we can go deeper, broader, and, and uh, wider, as, as the Marys were saying to us today in the Holy Family. All right, so this final resource for you before we open to comments and questions, which I do um, welcome in the chat, as well as I know uh, Alan and Neil might have some questions or comments. All right, the resource for you is your sovereignty statement, because this is all about um, saying no to unwanted touch, unwanted abduction, and saying yes to being a sovereign being in this universe, which is a function of cosmic law. The way that our sovereignty has been gotten around is through all of these manipulations and these obscurings. We can't see it, we don't know it. Well, now we're starting to know it. So you want to have a in mind a personal sovereignty statement that you can reflect on or just say, at any moment, even with the word sovereignty. And here are the pieces of it. It's got your declaration. It can be as simple as, I declare that I am sovereign and free. Your command. And I command that any energies that would cause me harm or suffering in any way leave my space now permanently. Your affirmation. I affirm that my will is respected according to cosmic law and your seal. And so it is. So I'm going to drop this now in chat so that you can copy it. You can use it exactly as I have it, or you can create your own type of sovereignty statement. And once you have it and you memorize it, you can encode it in one word sovereignty. So if you ever find yourself in dream space, in nighttime space, in medicine space, in any kind of space, getting a little freaky, you just go sovereignty. I had um, a client of mine who worked with the sovereignty statement as part of my Oracle training. And she said she did it in the dream and the being ridiculed her and said, ha ha ha, do you think this sovereignty statement can work? But the being skulked away because it knew that it did work. And so, um, all right. So, um, Again, if there are any questions or comments, we're opening, we're opening this. Um, I open this to uh, Neil and Alan, and um, I, I would love to hear some reflections, some does this resonate, some are you shocked, some <laughs> experiences, whatever. Alan. Well, no, I just have a, a, 
a question about cacao. I know it is a sacred herb, but I also heard it does irritate the bladder or can irritate. Do you know anything about that? Um, you know, anything can irritate anything. Right. And I think what you have to do is use it wisely, not overuse it. Never right. do more than like an ounce and a half in ceremony. Right. Um, give your body a break, you know, maybe don't do it every day and listen to your body. It might not be your plant medicine if it's irritating your bladder. There might be other medicines that are better for you. Well, thank you. You know, I love everything you said. I didn't catch all of it, but I think you are such a resource for the sacred feminine that, you know, uh, 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 do you do you have retreats coming up that did, did you mention retreats for you? you no, know, I don't have any retreats coming up. I have courses coming up online. And I am looking for locations to do retreats. So if anybody from this community wants to contact us, um, you can write to us at dove at seven sisters offerings.com. The seven is spelled out, or you can go to seven sisters mystery school.com and find the contact sheet and contact us, us there. We're always looking for resources like that to help make it easy for us. Great. This, Marguerite, this is kind of the next evolution of your work, right? I know. I mean, <laughs> when I, you know, when I saw this invitation, I'm like, yeah. I'm going for it. All right. Uh, Neil will be able to get this. He can handle it. His community can yeah. handle it. And I need to actually articulate this for myself in one place. Well, you know, we, we did for two years in a row, two day hybrid conferences, just two days for two years. So basically like almost 32 hours of content over two years, specifically wow. hybridization and people's experiences with it. So, yeah. you know, it's my, my alley. I really know that. Yeah, go ahead. Did they cover any of the womb material in it? There, or? Was, there was the talk about the hybridization program and the um, and how women are being utilized. Yeah. yeah. But, but when it comes to like, so most of these people are experiencers that actually have the experiences of being, um, yeah. you know, having their children hybridized, meeting their hybrid children, um, having pregnancies and then the doctor saying that uh, you're pregnant and, you know, um, two months later coming and the doctor saying, oh, actually, we don't know what happened. You're not pregnant. That's some right. Of, some of them even having a bump, you know, and then it's, it's gone all of a sudden. So That's that right. was the experiences that people had. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, the next step is what do we do about this? OK, we're not just going to sit down and take it or lie down and take it. We're going to we're going to say no. And we're going to say yes to what it is that we really need to say yes to. And we have to figure out, you know, what that is. Yeah. Um, exactly. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, do, you, do you have a an idea for the, what the future looks like as we integrate this wisdom and the new human being that can emerge from all these sacred teachings? Yeah, I mean, it really goes along with this co-creation of what we're calling the new earth, the new old Lemuria. We can imagine what Eden is like. That's what we wanna to move toward once again, where things are in order. Joy is the order of the day. Love is the currency. Um, you know, things are feel good. <laughs> things feel good. Imagine a world of that. That's where we want to move to. And we have to get through this, however long it's going to be of these stages of unveiling and being shocked and, and then saying, well, what am I going to do about this? And then acting on that, what am I going to do about that? And, but all at the same time, incorporating this wise love, because Doing it from a combat stage is exactly what the beings, the negative beings want. They thrive on conflict. They yeah. thrive on combat. They want to get us into that. So we have to learn how to be love warriors, you know, mm. like really incorporate that energy of warriorhood into a, a very highly refined spiritual way of being. And that's the initiation that we're all going through ideally mm. right. what do you know like about that. the concept of free this being a free will universe and there's there's a few notions there so i'm just going to let you know my thoughts and if you could just tell me what you feel about it yeah so the free will universe and in free will universe free will cannot be violated but obviously okay. it seems to be violated and then within that within the hybridization there are those that are saying 
hybridization, our, our higher selves have agreed to have these experiences. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, but when we come to this planet, we have amnesia, we forget those experiences. Mm -hmm. And so it's not really a true violation. What do you think? I know. Yes, I do believe we're in a free will universe. I do believe that cosmic law is ultimately free will. And I do believe that these beings know how to skirt around it. They know how to squeeze cosmic law within an inch of its life to get what they want. And they may well violate cosmic law and they just don't care. And they're not looking at the longer term consequences for themselves or anyone else. So the idea that we have agreed to our abductions is an interesting one and it's a very slippery slope. We have to be careful because that very idea can be hijacked into it's all okay. And actually it was okay seeing this gray alien being with its eyes, giving me information, blah, blah, blah. Look, cut the bullshit, all right? Let's just get down to brass tacks of what makes sense and what doesn't make sense, all right? Things that feel like crap, do not make sense. We do not have to have this as part of our universe. It may be that a whole bunch of us agreed to go through this for the awakening, as you were saying earlier with Chiraya, but this is not the way we want to have Earth be as a planet, as a mode of reality. We want to get through this thing, you know, to the new stage where, it, where we're not constantly in hell. Hmm. I agree. And just because we've decided something previously doesn't mean we can't update it and say, no, 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 you that's know, right. that's not for me that's, right that's now. That's right. And it's like, okay, what did I learn from, you know, the death of my mother when I was 10? What did I learn from this, from that? I learned all these sorts of things. Yes, all well and good. But it's all in service to a greater evolution back to New Earth Eden. Mm -hmm. It's not about being terrified under the cover of night and then not even having your memories right. and being traumatized. You don't even know why. No. What part of that is free will and cosmic law that is manipulation. And even though some of us as warriors came in to have these experiences, we came in to have these experiences to put a stop to it. Yeah. That's how I see it. We have to like be the, the mothers and fathers of this planet again. Thank you. Thank you. There's a question here from Marianne Grace, my friend Marianne Grace. In oh, I love Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Oh, Marianne. yes. Marianne says, hi, Marguerite. I'm stimulated with the word adultery as being about the misuse of power as power over like an adult, adultery adult, using their power over an innocent. Also, is there sacred room for mixing of different beings through love that is not adultery? Well, you know, I mean, and I look at this because I look at this with the Pleiades, who I believe are seven, seven starseed mothers of the world. And I've talked about that. They were involved in divine birth and so forth. A lot of their DNA is in the human family. In almost every human being has some DNA, according to my research. So I think there have been ethical cosmic law aligned methods of creation that we're engaged in, you know, throughout these histories and these timelines that, that we would not call violations or we would not call adultery. But there's obviously some kind of line that gets crossed where it is. And that I think is a discussion for the next generation coming in. What is that ethical line? How, how have these star beings involved, been involved in this? How have humans been involved in this? What do we say yes to and what do we say no to? How does that involve our own experimentation ourselves on our human family, on our animal family, on our plant family, you know, on our DNA family? All of that. I mean, these are not cut and dried answers and processes but I think this is opening another chapter to, you know, what is right use of creative uh, source creator energy right. by the angelics and by humans. 
Yeah, it also calls for a maturity of human beings as we come to realize we're part of this cosmic interaction that for thousands of years we've just been ignorant of. So that's right. Yeah, we're waiting. Thank you for that. The first thing is you have to see it, (laughs) you know, and of course, there's going to be lots of feelings around that, like Chirai was saying and so forth. But um, that's why we're all here together. We've got to hold each other up through this ontological shock as we realize, gee, you know, are these Asperger's people? uh, You know what I mean? Like, wow, that is a shocking thing to say and hold. And what is our attitude toward these people, it's going to be the same thing as our attitude toward everyone, because we're all hybrids. We all have reptilian DNA. We all have Anunnaki. We all have Pleiadian, whatever. And it's about how humanely are we acting? And also when we see hybriding that has gone wrong in a child that's banging his head against the wall, what kind of epigenetic healing are we going to do toward that person, which you won't even be able to do if you don't know he's a gray alien experiment. Right. That's so good. You have really evolved the whole discussion to another level by integrating it into the body as well as the evolving psyche. So we need this kind of conversation. Thank you. you I want to share here that this has been going on for quite some time, as you shared, right? Even stories of Zeus, it's hybridizations in all types of texts. And when we do True World History conferences, you know, majority of our presentations, because I've done this similar thing a few times over the last 10 years. Most of them don't have any ET talk at all, right? Um, even though it can be applied, we're just talking about human history. And then we go into ancient aliens, right? And then there's this huge gap yes. of the present time. And what's happened a couple of times here, and I even was uh, like wondering to myself, I was like, wait a second, this isn't really ancient history. But then I was realizing this is our history. It's been intrinsically connected to us for the whole time. And we can't have a conversation about our ancient history without realizing what's going on interdimensionally and what's going on with extraterrestrial life, because it's been affecting us behind the scenes for quite some time. So that's what you're doing here is really taking that level of us tracking back. that this That's right. Because the missing bridge between human and interdimensionals is the womb. Mm. Mm. And that's what I'm bringing up here today. Yes. It's and a dimensional doorway. That's how people that's, are. That is. And, and that's why we need to have a lot more dialogue and practices mm-hmm. about this. Sri Kaleshwar's work is a step, a door opening to this. You know, there are others who are aware of this and doing their own teachings and so forth. We want to come together on this to empower the womb so yeah. that it, it returns to its divine mother uh, creative aspect. So that mm. human women become the co-creators of mm. life. Beautiful. I would love for you, Alan, did you want to share something? I more. just want to say, did you mention the myth of Persephone? Um, because she actually, in the myth, it says she was actually abducted. That's by, right. Yeah. and It's then, an exact case of it. Yes. She's yes. abducted by these Anunnaki males. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. She was going to reproduce parthenogenetically uh herself and mm-hmm. in the midst of this ceremony she was doing oh here comes in zeus like smelling you know a shark smelling blood mm. yeah okay, that's what would happen and that is what ha- that's how the divine birth priestess hoods got taken over because these women in the middle of their rituals that like mary was doing to give birth to jesus to conceive jesus mm-hmm. some of these women were not lucky and they would be marauded in that mm-hmm. ritual space. Okay. So this, these are whole dialogues that I've had about this topic and we have to learn how to have sovereignty in these spaces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we need to come into balance too. you know, the wounded male and the, you know, the, the, the genetic lineages of that have to be purged. That's right. Yeah. And those, yeah. and the beings that are living off of our negativity, especially if we can be made aware uh, Paul Levy talks about Watiko. Have you know his That's book? Right. Yeah, there's so yeah. much. On. Yeah. Anyway, Neil, you were going to say something. Right on. Uh, Marguerite, I'd love for you, just, you know, we've been talking about the history of this experience for sure, but just to tie it home now to um, like bring it all home to your research on Immaculate Conception, Virgin Births, right? And let's talk about Jesus's birth, right? Yeah. And Yeshua and Pythagoras. 
as opposed to the abduction experience. That's so right. That's right. You know, right. these were the positive results of these high level conceptions by women. Jesus was the apex of this. His mother, Mary, was a Mary priestess of, of womb mysteries and love. And she knew how to work it and bring this truly high level male avatar to the planet. Pythagoras's mother, Pythias, um, was a similarly a divine birth priestess working at Delphi because she she was really connected with um, that lineage, you know, of, of those priestesses. Sometimes those women were engaging in parthenogenesis, like Mother Mary, she's doing it herself. And sometimes they were engaging in interdimensional intercourse by choice with certain um, male gods. And in Pythias's case, it was Apollo to engender Pythagoras. So we know that Apollo is the son of Zeus, but in a way he was a much better guy, <laughs> you know? And so the, these things, again, they're not cut and dried. There's There are ethics involved. People are making the best of bad situations, including these priestesses um, and so forth. But at least she was able to bring forth one such as Pythagoras to open us back up to the mysteries or keep them alive as, you know, Atlantis was degenerating into Greece and to Rome. And then we have Plato, whose Pedictione was his mother, who was said to have divinely given birth to him also through Apollo. So, you know, these Apollo sons are, are higher level helping humanity maintain or go back to their awakening when we read their ancient material. And did you know that Socrates, when he was in prison, had a vision of the divine mother, the divine feminine, and wow. wrote it? Yeah, it's in the Apology of Plato. Wow, that's so amazing. I love it. Oh, dear Socrates, geez. Wow. But I actually want to see this program again, Neil, with Marguerite. Yeah. Well, you got to watch the other ones we've done with Marguerite, too. That's kind of like, I feel that, that we've done two or three before this. And I feel all of them together is one course. Leading yeah. You yeah. The, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, so. a, it's like a complete protein put together. <laughs> it is, right? Yeah. We, the amino acids have finally completed in this one. <laughs> well, Sheila says Marguerite's book was a revelation to me. I felt the truth in my body. It resonates with my inner knowing. Wonderful book. Can't wait for the next one. So. Oh, blessed be Sheila. She's, yeah. she's a dear sister as well. Yeah. Please, Marguerite, please just go ahead and let everybody know one last time where they can find you and any, any of the last words you may have. Yes. So just go to seven sisters mystery school.com. And if you are watching at a time where you're not seeing chat um, and can't get these links, just go there and search for um, the solstice cacao ceremony is, is on the, that homepage. The Holy Womb Chakra Teachings is under our best-selling courses. Um, the Reclaiming Our Starry Origins is a little more tricky to find, but you can write to us at dove at seven sisters offerings.com and just poke around. There's a lot of material there. And uh, yeah, so you'll you'll have fun.